So when I made the green tea video, someone had suggested that the tea I had seen him drinking might be spearmint because spearmint tea is also known to help skin. And so I was like, that, that's a good thought, I'll look into it. And basically I did look into it and it looks like drinking spearmint tea, which for some reason in the US, like it's not as readily available as like all the other teas. Um, so you kind of, you definitely do have to hit up like a few different stores or like check their inventory online before you go there. Cause it's like, I don't know, for some, some reason spearmint tea is more difficult to find. And they have like a lot of, I don't wanna say fake teas, but there'll be like a, mint blend where it's just like spearmint and like some other mint like obviously you just want the actual spearmint but anyways i looked into it and it looks like spearmint tea actually does more for your acne than even like green tea like there's way 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 more just like reviews studies and it's like this well-known thing where um a lot of people have dermatologists actually recommending spearmint tea to them, which with how many dermatologists I've seen in my life, I'm so surprised I've not heard of this before. And then another update, um, I did confirm he is drinking green tea in his videos. Um, it's by Hatsu. Sadly, you cannot get it in the US. I already tried. Um, and it's a green tea and chamomile blend. And so thankfully I have some dried chamomile flowers. And so I'll be putting them in one of my loose leaf tea strainers and making some tea. Usually I use it for my yoni steams. It's great, but um, I've never actually drank chamomile. Or is it chamomile? I don't know. So I'm going to try that. Um, so I guess for the video, we'll call it chamomile <laughs> until I can figure out how to pronounce it. But um, I did some research on that and um, chamomile has whitening agents where um, if people have dark spots and they use a bit of like the tea in a tea bag or like they'll make um, a toner. And like if you do make a chamomile tea toner, definitely leave it in your fridge. And um, so like it doesn't spoil or sour whatnot or whatnot. And like you'll, you should probably change it out like after like a week or whatnot. But um, you can add it. Obviously you could like boil a whole pot of chamomile and then you could add it to your bath, which I've been thinking about that. Um, adding the chamomile to my goat's milk. So it's gonna be a lactic acid. And I can't remember the, um, the acid that's in the chamomile that is the lightning agent, um, but th there's something in there, or I think it's tannins. It's something in there and it does lighten up, um, yeah different marks and things like that. I don't know how aggressive it is, but it it definitely has been touted as a lightener. So I thought that was kind of cool, though sadly I couldn't find any information on whether ingesting large amounts of chamomile will help with like brightening your skin up, but just all in all, like you would think with some of these teas, like obviously the green tea, you if you use it um, topically as well as internally, it does wonders. Um, and the spearmint, I didn't see as much of like people using it as a topical or a, as a mask. I did a green tea face mask yesterday. Obviously I just bought the spearmint tea like an hour ago. So um, I'm actually have it steeping right now um, in my tumbler. So I'm just gonna let it steep for like an hour. One, I think one person said like they'll le let it steep like overnight. So basically um, I'll give you the rundown on the spearmint tea. So the spearmint tea has been basically compared to spironolactin, um, which I think I've shared with you guys that I've been on spironolactin for years. And I just recently got off of it maybe four or five months ago. So that was a big thing for me. And then obviously I've been trying to control my acne using things that I can get over the counter and not need a prescription for. So the thing about spironolactin is that basically it helps your, um, I guess the sebum glands not make so much oil. So if you have an oil slick of a face, like the type of face where like your makeup is kind of coming off and it's like only one or 2 p.m then you would absolutely love spironolactin. The only bad thing about it is that it's a diuretic, meaning that it makes you have to go pee a lot. So if you're like on 100 milligrams, you already know what's up because you're having to go pee like every hour. <laughs> like it's pretty bad. Um, also, it does halt the hair growth or I don't wanna say halt, but it slows down the hair growth. And so you'll notice you won't have to shave as often. Um, now for the hair on my head, I don't know. I've been on it for so many years. Obviously I was still able to grow out my hair, 
you guys obviously I have I have a wig on right now but um, you guys have seen my natural hair it really has grown out quite a bit um, so I was able to do that in two years and obviously I was on spironolactin the whole time so I don't know how much it affects the hair on your head but I know for the hair on your body you definitely won't have to shave as much if you're on it um, what else does it do yeah I mean it's good and then over time it'll help clear up your acne but you have to like obviously keep it keep on the regimen so after a few weeks you'll start to notice that your face will kind of clear up I've never had 100% clear skin in my life so I can't say that it's like a miracle but it definitely did help and sometimes they would also give me like a doxycycline as well which taking long-term antibiotics for acne is just you you're just not supposed to do it so anyways, I'm off of those and um, yeah, spearmint tea basically does the same thing as spironolactin in that it really helps with the extra oil production and people who have hormonal acne, they notice that their skin cleared up on their chin and on their cheeks. So yeah, so if you get like blackheads and things like that, other places, obviously you're gonna have to be more aggressive and um, use like maybe one of those pore strips or use one of those activated charcoal or scrubs to get those out. But as far as for cystic acne or hormonal acne, it will help with that. And I've read, gosh, so many reviews on it. And um, a lot of people had a lot of success using spearmint. There was one review I was a little worried because she did say, Basically, it, it does something with androgen, which is a type of hormone, and she said that basically it's the same as if you were to get on birth control to help control your hormonal acne, like it, it will help much the same. But she said something about it was making her body react, like do you guys remember the birth control Yaz? I don't know if they still make it or not, I know like they had some like lawsuits and things against them, or maybe that was Yasmin, but anyways, the Yaz birth control pill, um, she said that when she was on that it made her spot in between her periods, so even when she was on her period she was having like a, like a light bloody discharge, which I've experienced that too when I had my um, Mirena IUD and I had to get it taken out because I, I spotted nonstop for like 12 or 13 months. It was pretty crazy. So some people just have bad reactions to certain types of hormonal birth control. So it's like, I'm wondering if I'm drinking too much of the spearmint tea, if my body's gonna start to, um, you know, just start spotting or whatnot but um as far as for the acne a lot of people have seen success with spearmint tea um i've found that out of everyone who talked about using it the majority of them would drink at least two cups a day um i think my last video um i, I had to look it up but it looks like two cups or one cup of tea is eight ounces so if you can measure out at least eight ounces for your first cup um a lot of people recommended uh taking it once in the morning and then once at night so kind of like if you're on spironolactin or whatever other dermatologist recommended acne medication sometimes they'll break it up to some in the morning and then some at night to kind of keep it in your blood system all all the time <laughs> like around the clock so you might want to try that um i'm just gonna kind of drink it throughout the day as i can i'm gonna be doing both green tea and spearmint because i'm just um the smart thing would would be to do the green tea first let that get in my system for a few weeks stop the green tea and then start the spearmint and just see what changes i see but honestly i just want to like tag team it and just get my acne cleared up like i just i don't want to play games anymore <laughs> um i'm kind of over having um such textured skin so that's what i'm gonna be doing <laughs> so i'm gonna be doing it um you know every day i'm gonna be drinking at least two cups and um yeah, it is also very, very popular with the PCOS community, and there is another type of ailment. It, it's a pretty weird word. I couldn't even begin to pronounce it, but basically it happens in women, and um, sometimes it will cause like the hair on your face to just grow uncontrollably. Like We're not talking like a little bit of like, you know, a little bit of stash up here that you wax every like four to six weeks. Like we're talking like stubble. Um, and it's an, a different, it uh, basically happens when you have too much testosterone. And um, yeah, people who have that ailment, I don't know what to call it, illness, um, they drink spearmint tea too. So spearmint tea is pretty, pretty popular. I can't believe I haven't heard about it before <laughs> until now. Um, there are a lot of stories of women actually getting off of their 
like medication, like their acne medication. Or one girl, like she was waiting for her insurance to basically give her the go ahead that she was covered to go see her dermatologist and like for um, these certain whatever medicines it was. And basically she started spearmint tea in the meantime. And by the time they approved it, she was like, oh, I don't need it anymore. Like. It's really helped a lot of people. I saw a lot of people who were like in their late 20s and 40s and stuff like that using it. So, and then I heard of people who are in their teens using it. So it's, it's like, oh my gosh. <laughs> so that's why I'm gonna take both the green tea and the spearmint because there's just so much more, not only research, but just like reviews on people actually doing the spearmint than there are for people using the green tea for acne clearing. Mostly what I see for people with, um, who are using green tea for skincare, they're doing a lot of topicals. So it's either the green tea and extract and like a serum, or it's doing the green tea face mask, which is what I did yesterday. And basically you just take like a little bit of honey, like maybe a teaspoon, you add it, you break open the um, tea leaves after you've already steeped your tea. And then you just put it on your face. And with honey, like it will warm up to your face, so it'll start to drip. So it's best to have on a shirt like uh, that you don't mind getting stained because like honey does stain some shirts so if it like does drop like drip on your shirt you're fine um i had that issue last night <laughs> it dripped and i just used stain remover and i got it out but yeah so that's that i'm gonna drink some spearmint tea and um hopefully i won't get any new breakouts being on this regimen of green tea during the day and spearmint during the day and hopefully my skin won't be so oily because uh, it's it gets really 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 oily